that will help you overcome and strategize in the cutthroat world of real estate. Now, here are your hosts, John and Roberto. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Episode 135, coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas. This is the San Antonio Show. We did a show probably 18 months ago, Roberto, I think, the Texas Show. We did it live from the Miami Convention Center, and that worked out okay. So here we are back in Texas, none too soon. I've got, well, first of all, who's my co-host? Where are you, Roberto? I'm Roberto Cabrera. I'm on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, but I'm very excited to be in big old Texas. All right. <laughs> and I've got two guests today uh, beside Gordon me. Bonbrook. Gordon Bonbrook. Bonbrook and David. Hi, everybody. David Lozano here. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for having me. Also in San Antonio. Yes. Excellent. I'm very excited to be here. I'm down here, Roberto, for the Fiesta. Fiesta is a week-long party, 100 events, food courts, festivals, and uh, an event last night. Uh, we're we're going to be doing a Battle of the Flowers reenactment. We're going to be going to three parades. It is a town-wide party to rival Mardi Gras, and that's what brought me down here for the, the town-wide party. Yeah, but you snuck I, out of town without permission. I didn't know you were there. I know, I know. And right. and I'm a little overdressed, I yeah. think, <laughs> ordinarily for San Antonio, but everybody is really dressed to the nines for this week-long party. It's very colorful and everybody is dressed to the to the nines. Anyway, um what excites me about San Antonio is that while everybody's been talking about the Texas real estate market, they generally talk about Dallas. They talk about Austin. Um, they don't talk about it. They talk about Houston. What happened to San Antonio? So let me turn it over to our two guests, Gordon, and tell us, you're a New Yorker. Yes. You're a successful New York agent, and you came down here to San Antonio. And why? Uh, yeah, I'm born and raised in New York. So been there my whole wow. life. Um, and the very beginning of COVID on 20, in 2020 March, I, I got it. I was like the first round where the, you know, the OG of everyone got it really bad. I was curled in a ball for six weeks, every single symptom you can imagine. Didn't think I was going to make it. Um, but through that, the silver lining was, um, I post about how serious it was. And I was connected with my now wife, uh, on Instagram. And she normally was going from New York to um, San Antonio back and forth. She had an apartment there. So she just started asking questions. She goes, you know, how bad is it? And what's happening in New York? And all these, and we just got into this incredible back and forth text. And so I'm like, all right, well, the next day, well, let's do a Zoom call. We did an eight hour Zoom call the next day. Um, and then the day after that, she's like, the flights just opened up. And uh, she goes, I'm going to go check on my apartment. I'd love to see you. And then we hung out every day for two months. It's total lockdown. And uh, proposed, got married. And This is how you met your wife? Yes. My now, goodness. David, are you That's also a real love story? story? Yeah. Are you also a New York transplant or are you a lifer? Uh, no, John. I'm actually from Mexico. And I'm born and raised in Mexico. I actually just moved to San Antonio like a year and a half ago. And, and yeah, well, we'll talk about more about San Antonio and why I moved there. But like Gordon says, San Antonio, there's a lot of special things about it. It's a booming market, but yeah, born and raised in Mexico. What I differentiates it, San Antonio? Like when you think Texas, you think of those other cities. You don't, San Antonio you think of, but it's a little bit, it's the fourth, the fifth city that you would consider just, as, just when you even think about Texas. Right. What differentiates it from the others? Well, I, I think San Antonio differentiates itself from the others as well there's there's a lot of things actually first of all one of the largest cities in texas in the u.s actually seventh largest city in the u.s that's one thing you could you could think about of san antonio other could be it's one of the greenest cities in america that's it's the 44th greenest city in america there's tons of parks a lot of recreation uh i think that another important fact about San Antonio could be that has one of the largest historic districts in the country. So that's also a really nice thing. There's tons of Gilded Age 
mansions out there in San Antonio, Monte Vista neighborhood. There's a lot of neighborhoods like that, that is very different from other markets like Houston, Dallas. Also the price point. I think that's one of the most important ones, price point. Uh, still very affordable market. Um, Wait, let, let's, let's underline that for Roberto. The average price of a home is $300,000, Roberto. So when you think about uh, Phoenix in the old days, and you think about Florida in the old days where retirees would go there where they could have a more affordable life, but those those days are over in Florida. Those days are over in Phoenix. Is San Antonio at three hundred thousand dollars poised to double and triple over the next? Without decade? a doubt. And, and what's really surprising, actually, there's a lot of wealth here that it, it's just very understated, very different than a lot of the other places. So I'll give you an example. I still do, I'm very active in New York City. Still do work there. I had a team of ten, and when I met my wife, I I couldn't do the team anymore. Um, so I still just go in as a as an agent, but. There was a, a client here that I met and they're like the top of the market would be like a million and a half dollar home. And she lived it. And she's like, oh, I got a job in New York. I need to pay at a tear in New York. So I'm like thinking, OK, it's going to be six hundred thousand dollars. She goes six million. So, you know, like they have the money, but you don't need to spend it here because, you know, there's just, there's nowhere to put it. Like where to get five houses. It, it doesn't make sense. So it will catch up. And I don't think and I didn't even realize this, you know, you don't realize how close you are to Austin. I mean, it's about an hour, hour to hour and a half, kind of in that neighborhood, depending on traffic. And it's just slowly moving down to New Braunfels, just like, and, and Microsoft just did a huge data center. It's a huge cyber um, area. So I think that uh, San Antonio is definitely, it's, I think it's just catching up. I think it's, it's a great time right now. I think, you know, five to 10 years, it's, you can already see just the, the few years that I've been here, it's just amazing. What's happened is everything's getting more elevated. Um, it's you can just see the difference of like what's happening with the city and the infrastructure. They're putting a lot of money in the infrastructure here. One of my best so, friends in New Canaan came down to tech to to Dallas, and she sold her two million dollar colonial in Connecticut. And she said, "Ah, you know, what can two million dollars buy me in Dallas?" And it was a nineteen seventies fixer upper, yeah, um, and, and not in the greatest neighborhood. And she said, really, Texas is more expensive than Connecticut. And what I'm hearing today is that, no, we, we still have opportunities below a million dollars here in San Antonio for something nice. Yeah, so, affordable so luxury, is, definitely. So I'm, I'm, I know just on the map that uh, San, uh, Austin is northeast of, of, uh, of San Antonio, right? Right. More or less. And it's, yeah. about, an hour, it's about an hour drive. Yeah, yeah. Thing. I mean, if you're from New York, you know, the LIE, it can take you an hour and a half to get the Hamptons or four on 4th of July yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. It's very similar. So. so, but is that area going to, is that going to fill in, become like a little bit like Dallas Fort Worth kind of thing? Or is it further? It's a, just, it won't quite do that. No, it's already it already happens. The Brothels is right in the center and it's already yeah. one of the most booming cities. I mean, I, I don't want to know the statistics, but I think it was like one of the, the quickest growing cities. And what one of the crazy statistics, like all kind of the hill country, which is between San Antonio and, and Austin, where you have a lot of wineries, you have more wineries uh, after Napa. It's the second mount, most amount of wineries that you have in the country after Napa. The, and the climate will yield good grapes? Uh, uh, it's, it's more, the wineries are not all, they, they can only grow certain types of grapes and the rest they would import from other places, but it's more, you know, kind of a thing where you just go and you you know, open a bottle and, you know, they, they understood. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Any brands yep. Roberto actually drinks? <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't, I'm not a, a wine enthusiast, so I, 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 <laughs> but there's supposedly some great wines. He's a, he's a New Yorker. Yeah, he has yeah. a refined palate. About a hundred wineries actually. That's about a lot. Them. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot. It's, about it's a 35 light, minutes it's away from San Antonio. Wineries and stuff. Yeah. 35 minutes to an hour away from San Antonio. There's all of that hill country. The wineries. I was I was looking into that as well. So it's like about a hundred. So when who moves here? Do people move here to retire, or is there an industry? Because when I think of what's driving Austin, I think it's University of Texas. And when you've got a University of Texas, which is arguably you know one of the top five uh, state schools in the country, 
um, with all those research opportunities and all that uh, technology opportunity out of it, may, it is no wonder that the money is coming into Austin. What's causing the money to come into San Antonio or what will cause it? So I think two things. And what really got me excited when I came here was I never thought in a million years that I would end up in San Antonio. Um, the quality of life is incredible. You know, so affordable. It, it's it's when I go back to New York and you know, I'm going back and forth. York and it's thirty dollars now, and here it's you know eight. So it's I think I think what's going to happen is more and more companies. You know, they went into Austin and all of a sudden things got doubled and it got more and more expensive. Labor got more expensive. Uh, people are starting to discover San Antonio. They're like, okay, well if I can go for a third of the price, get land, employees, they're going to come here, and then eventually it's just going to it's going to explode. It's just a matter of when. So the difference between San Antonio and say Cincinnati or Pittsburgh or any of these is that this is a state that encourages that is business friendly. Yeah. And in the state that is so business friendly, famously business friendly, you're the only affordable option. It's much more, it's double the price if I was to move my company to Dallas or Austin or Houston. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So my employees can afford to live here. They can afford that $8 drink. Mm -hmm. They can afford that $300,000 home instead of that million dollar home. So what businesses are moving into the area? What industries? Uh, well, I'd say all, all different types of industries. I mean, it's again, one of the largest cyber data. Um, you, you know, you have, um, and I think from there it's a victory. I think, uh, I forget the name of the company. Well, you have, uh, I, I, all different industries. I, I just can't think of all the different companies right now. I think it's interesting to me that, you know, if I was a retiree and I wanted to come down to San Antonio and I say, well, you know, maybe I'd like to open up a coffee shop in, in my retirement, you know, or to do something, you know, and open up a small business. But would any but would anybody in the community support it? You know, is there any money coming in? Is there investment coming in? And so I think that's what's interesting. You could attract both the young tech workers for the cyber industry and the tech industries. And of course, you've got the the energy industry. Have you got, uh, or, or is that all Houston? Or is that also in San Antonio? That's also in San Antonio, yeah. But yeah. Like Gordon says, there's, there's many kinds of industries that are exploding in San Antonio, driving a lot of millennial population to the area, especially because of what we were saying about the price. You know, it's just affordable luxury, definitely. But so the demographic that's moving there is a is leans young more than old. I think a little bit of both. I mean, affordability is, is good on whatever age, you know, but yeah, sure. me that I'm an, a millennial, for example, I see San Antonio and I see, you know, a lot of opportunity for me here. That's why one of the reasons why we move here, because we can do so much with less. I think that's how people are thinking about it in Austin. It's just not there anymore. You know, prices are very, very expensive. Dallas too. And San Antonio's barely keeping up in that price. So David, where were you before? Opportunity. I was in Monterey, Mexico. Okay. Monterey, Thank Mexico you. is in the north part of Mexico, which is also okay. a huge city. Uh, but yeah, we, we, I actually go back and forth between the U.S. and Mexico all the time. And is San Antonio accessible? Do you have good flights, good airport there? You can get to New York direct, all that type of thing. You can travel all over the world from San Antonio, even Europe. There's direct flights now to, where was that? Gordon, I think. Frankfurt, Frankfurt yeah. yeah. And you know, the San Antonio airport, uh, they're going to do like a $2.5 billion investment in the San Antonio airport in the next couple of years. So they're expanding it. And also, I don't know, Gordon, you've been flying a lot from San Antonio and me too. It, it feels like a really calm airport. You know, it's not that crowded. And I think that's also a nice thing. It's also in the middle of the city, so you, it's very accessible to wherever you want to go at the airports. Yeah, well, I have something really crazy about, to your point. Um, so from where I live, it's 10 minutes. I, I leave my house when they start boarding the plane. So yeah. I can literally leave my house and be at the gate in 15 minutes. Yeah. You can never do anywhere else. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you're right. It's an incredible thing. And, and I was saying, I still have my apartment. You know, luckily I have a rent stabilized apartment in New York. So I keep that. So I don't have to pack anything. I just get up early in the morning, jump on a plane, work, and then I'm in New York. Yeah. 
Right. Talk to me about the downtown. I was, I'm staying at the St. Anthony Hotel. It's a beautiful, beautiful gilded hotel. age, you know, a hundred year old hotel, great history. And I'm about a block from the famous River Walk. And everybody encourages me to go down to the River Walk. And it's a two and a half mile um, river bank. Well, well, tell me, why is the River Walk so important to the downtown? Uh, feel and culture of San Antonio? Well, I think, I mean, everyone talks about the Riverwalk, but to me, the Riverwalk is sort of like everyone talks about Times Square. Um, you know, people that live here, it's not the first place you're going. Yeah. yeah it's, right. it, it's kind of a place that there's a lot of restaurants and play, it's very touristy. It's fun to walk, walk along a river and, and go to different restaurants and see all the people. But, you know, if you live in New York, you're not like, let's go to Times Square and see all the people you know, you're, you're going to the other places. So yeah. while it's very neat and I think it has a, you know, has its place and you walk at night, it's, it's a beautiful, so like walk along the river. But, uh, but other than that, it's, it's, I would say there's so many other places that I would go before the river walk. All right. Talk to me about them. I mean, I loved it, but maybe it's because I'm a tourist and I thought, yeah. well, this, this is what separates your city from say Charlotte, you know, what's Charlotte. It's just an intersection of, of state highways, but you know, uh, but you've got a river walk. You've got a downtown walkable center. And I just thought that was so cool. But yeah, where do you go? It's actually, John, it's actually 15 miles long, the river walk, 15 miles. Yeah? Yeah, it's it's actually 15 miles. And, and like you said, yeah, it's very walkable. It's beautiful for tourists. Just to, to add to what you were saying about that tourist area, in San Antonio, we get 34 million tourists per year. That's a 2020 two statistic i think that's also a great thing for for the city you know there's tons of tourists coming in so what is the I, population of walk is, you know so, to your point it's very long so you know you talk about the epicenter and that's probably the most touristy area but then being so long it's sort of like the high line where things just start building along it you know um the pearl probably the most beautiful area of like restaurants and hotel emma which is awarded i think one of the top luxury restaurant uh hotels in the country it's everything is very unique and curated it's and just things are like building all around kind of the river walk but it's not what i'm when i would say don't go to the river it's not not go to the river walk but it's just not something where you're like there's so many other things like what i just talked about and things are being built around it so if we can convince roberto to cash in his uh new york city apartment and head down to san antonio what have you got for a guy like roberto a guy like me. I mean, if I would decide this is the place I want to retire to, this is a great, you know, um, this is a great lifestyle. What have you got for me? And they say two million dollars. You said that gets me the that my pick. Of Your place. pick. Am I going to yeah. go downtown and 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 buy a building? Am I going to be on the outside? Is what is this hill country everybody keeps talking about? Well, the hill country is you're, you're further away, but there's there's three areas. Um, you have Alamo Heights. Uh, Almost Park and Terrell Hills, which are kind of, you know, if you're, you know, Connecticut, it would be sort of like Greenwich and Canaan, you know, kind of that. And it's 10 minutes away from downtown, a lot of houses. Um, you know, I think a lot of, uh, there's also the Dominion, which is a little further out, a lot of big houses there. Um, but downtown is more and more what you're finding is people living in from the hill country, they're getting a pied de downtown, or uh, they, their kids are all out of the house. They had a big house and now they're like, okay, we're downsizing. Let's get a condo. There's not, you know, it's definitely more of a multifamily rental market right now. The condo market hasn't caught on so much yet, but, uh, but I think that's like downtown, I think is, is definitely, I mean, David, you should probably speak more to it, but it definitely seems like a more younger kind of demographic downtown. I think it just depends what you're looking for, John. I mean, if, if you ever want to come to San Antonio and do something, it, you could probably start by investing in something small. Like I would recommend, for example, something near downtown. Those neighborhoods that, that uh, Gordon are, is talking about are probably the top neighborhoods in the area. They're beautiful neighborhoods. More for, for just living in San Antonio. If you're going to live in San Antonio, definitely some of the top neighborhoods. But there's also other, I would say, undiscovered areas. You know, in my eyes, like Monte Vista, uh, Alta Vista neighborhoods, which are very historic and there's beautiful homes. There are hundred year old homes, 150 year old homes that are very accessible. So if you 
like that kind of thing, you know, to have a historic house and fix it. And, you know, that's another thing that you can look into. Another very interesting fact that I was looking into about San Antonio, I don't know if you heard of an app called AirDNA. Well, AirDNA is this app that follows the trends of Airbnb in all over the US and Canada, all over the world, right? So San Antonio actually has a rank of 81% in Airbnb. So that's that's actually a really good thing. Not a lot of cities in Texas have that rating, you know, for so for rentals and stuff like that. 81% represents what? Look, let me tell you right now. I have it right here. It's just like so what is that measures. what does that number represent? Yeah. Like it measures. I have it right here. Popularity. Investability. That's it. That's one thing. Investability, rental demand, revenue growth, seasonality, and regulation. So that's what it's measuring. It gives you an 81%. It's actually better than Dallas and Houston. Most most of the other markets in the, in the Texas area, San Antonio is one of the top four Airbnb. It's, it's kind of undiscovered for Airbnb, actually. There's not enough. So for people that are coming to San Antonio, they're doing a lot of money there, investing in rental properties, renting it per night. So in, in neighborhoods like I was talking about, let's say Monte Vista, Alta Vista, you can probably buy something for, I don't know, from 500,000 to a million, you would buy something very beautiful, like historic, and you could rent it very nicely by the room or the whole house, you know? And when you describe uh, Monte Vista, is that an acre? Uh, would it be two acres? Or am I out in the country where it's more than an acre? I mean, well, how, how dense? Monte Vista is about, I don't know, like 10 minutes away from San Antonio at the most. I mean, from downtown San Antonio. So you're talking about half acres. Yeah, about half acres, but you're close to everything. I mean, you're in some parts, you're about five minutes away from the action. So it's a, it's a kind of undiscovered neighborhood, in my opinion, but it's it's a beautiful neighborhood. Beautiful, beautiful. And, so, and how, you, me, so there's a vibrant, there's a vibrant downtown life and urban life if you choose to have that, which seems a little bit younger. Let's just say you have a client. They get married. They're going to have their kids. The guy's killing it, doing a tremendous, or both of them together. They're making a lot of money and they're like, look, we really want to have like our little bit of a forever home to bring up our kids for the next 25 years. We'd like to have an acre or two. Where are they going? Are they going north, south, east, west of the city? Like where are they, where do, what are their options and what can they buy? I think they're uh, going more to the Dominion area, right, Gordon? Yeah, they're definitely going north. They're going to Stone Oak, towards Bernie, you know, uh, a lot of areas like that, you get a lot more land, you know, just like, you know, pretty much like any city, the further you go out, the more land you're gonna get. Um, so but if you are, want to say three, two, two, three acres, you want to build a five, six thousand square foot house. How much does that cost you for the land for to build, et cetera? Like what sort of budget does someone need to achieve something like that? Which I would imagine in the, in that town, in that city would be like they made they just built this amazing place outside of town. You should see it kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So I think I mean, just just what I said, the, the top end is probably two, three million. You know, when it's that is like. The highest end. I mean, other than yeah. I think um, one of the basketball players put his, you know, they built some ten acre with all these things, and you know, for trying to sell it for ten million, and we'll, you know, it's probably one person in the city that wants that. So maybe another basketball. Player. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. it's you know, it, it makes you know, you build that for yourself. Um, but but typically, you know, the things that are above two million sit for a long time uh, because it's just. It's just it, it, it's it's uh, like cribs, you know. You have this massive house with all. This, most people don't need all that that lavish. You know, it's very under as I was saying, very understated here. Like you know, people like you know more. I, I say more land and more of like kind of relaxed house. They don't need an extra ten bedrooms that for no purpose. Yeah. So it's so it sounds like we're not waiting for one great event to occur that's going to change San Antonio. I'm looking across the street, by the way, at new construction condominiums, four stories high. Don't need to go 10 stories, 50 stories. It's a very um, uh, low, say a flat city, very flat city. So that is a four-story building set with a big now leasing sign on it. And I see evidence of this all over town is that they're, developing new condos and new buildings in and among old San Antonio. And we're not waiting for one big company to move in 
and transform the country. Apparently, it's happening all over and it's happening very organically. Yeah. And it's because of lifestyle, affordability, and a business friendly climate. Is the infrastructure, do we have enough infrastructure? Because when we talk about a lot of these places that are undergoing such great growth, they don't have enough schools. You talk about Florida these days and people say, oh my God, it was really good prices before COVID, but the prices have gone nuts and there's no place to enroll my kids in school. How are the, how are the schools and is the infrastructure tech, uh, keeping up with the with the growth? Uh, well, the, 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 as David mentioned earlier, they spent ton of money on infrastructure here and they're and they're ahead of the game and and because it's happening organically i think a lot of the problem happens when like austin or something, with something just explodes right away and then you're trying to play catch up it's very difficult so they are expecting this to happen so organically it's happening and the infrastructure is great in terms of the schooling i can't really you know speak to like the schooling i know um it's my my wife has kids and they're in school and there's no issues and uh you know, but uh, but I don't I don't really know about the schooling system. Okay. Something to mention, John, is that San Antonio is pretty big. It's, it's just so much space. That's why you you feel it's a little bit flat. So I also think that that's a good thing about San Antonio. You can get a lot of space anywhere you go for a very good price. And overall, for infrastructure, I think it's still very very good on infrastructure. It's going to be uh, all right for the next at least five to ten years. So I'm looking at the map here and there's kind of a beltway around the city. It's like the, where the 46 is or whatever. So when we talk about being in the suburbs of being outside of the city, is it outside of that or is it still within that perimeter? It's within the perimeter, but the 16 four is kind of outside the rim. And there's a lot of, when we, when you're talking about land, let's say outside that's when you start getting into the acre, two acre, three acre inside would probably be half acre to acre. The closer you get to the city, like Alma Heights, the place I talked about, or quarter acre to half acre, kind of in that neighborhood. And how's the traffic in the city? Like, was the commutability? If you go out of the city, is it a pain? Is that a, is that a big compromise to go out, or is it like not a big deal? It's not a big deal at all. I, I unless you're going to Austin, thirty five yeah. is the only road, so that thirty five can be a real mess. But other than that, it's very easy to get around. But I have to say, literally, I love everything about San Antonio except for the drivers. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> the only thing. They're crazy here. Yeah. <laughs> but, but other than that, I think they can't say one negative thing about San Antonio. Yeah. Where do people go when they leave San Antonio? You're saying they get a pia de terre and then they have something in the hill country, which is how far away is the hill country and, and what's different about the hill country? I mean, when you guys well, talk about hill country, there's not a whole lot of elevation in right. this part of Texas. I'm thinking that the hill country is about as flat as Central Park. Oh, well, I was just <laughs> no. country, let's call it. <laughs> so, yeah, how far away is this hill country? And is that, you know, full of lakes and forests and trees? Or, you know, what, what, what would I see in the hill country? Well, it's about probably about between 35 and an hour away from the city, from the city center. You know, you can drive 40 minutes and you'll be in a winery. There's forests, there's rivers, sometimes there's caverns too. It's beautiful areas like Bernie. Bernie's not that far away from, from the city center and it's a beautiful little town. Uh, tons of little cafes, stuff like Which that. Which way are you going, north? North, In, yeah. You're describing north? Yeah, yeah, for, for Bernie, yeah. But you could also go the other way, you know, you can go south, there's also, there's Fredericksburg. There's a lot of little towns very close to the city. I would imagine there's probably people that live there, like they live in Bernie and then they just travel to a little apartment in downtown or something smaller in the city. But I mean, still, you can live very close to downtown San Antonio, have a decent sized lot. I mean, if you guys are in New York, half an acre is just like, especially in, in the city, it's just like, it's never going to happen. You know? So half an acre is, is pretty decent size to live five to 10 minutes close to everything, in my opinion. Is there like a historic district where there's like townhouses and things like that in the city? Yeah, that's that's the district that I was telling you about, Monte Vista, okay. Alta Vista neighborhood, uh, King William, all of those neighborhoods. All of that, all of those neighborhoods together are actually one of the largest historic districts in the country, in San Antonio, and it's a very undiscovered area. Beautiful, beautiful homes there. So where's the investment opportunity? Should I be looking out in the hill country? Should I be looking at 
uh, uh, renovating a building in the downtown? Where are the investment opportunities for people who are getting excited about a direct flight from Manhattan? I mean, you you came from Manhattan and you say it's very commutable. You can be in the airport in, in 15 minutes from your house and you can get to New York and then you can come back to a fabulous lifestyle. And you've invested in this coffee shop. Tell me, what caused you to say, you know what, I think I'm going to invest in this area and I'm going to open up a business uh, in this area. So talk to me about the investment potential and why here. Uh, well, as I was saying before, organically, you can just see that it's how it's building. Uh, very similar. I, you know, we talked earlier um, when I lived in Manhattan, watching Williamsburg and just kind of how it organically and then just boom. And I think it's very similar. That's going to happen here. And and, and all these developers are, are taking huge plots of lands and creating um, neighborhoods, basically neighborhoods with within all these different like Tobin Hill and off the Pearl. They just opened up uh, this week. Uh, do you know the name, David, of uh, that 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 marketplace? Um, oh, yeah, I saw that. The, uh, yeah, the it's market, market, something like that it now, but it's like an Italy. And so yeah. uh, that just opened up this week. Um, so there's all these different things that are just slowly happening. And I, I it just will attract more and more people. And I so to the areas King William, Tobin Hill, they're great investment opportunities. Um, and investment here is incredible compared to say New York City, because New York, you know, people, if you live there, you hold, uh, appreciates, um, but it's very hard with all the common charges and everything else to like ink out and make sense of like buying something and renting something out. And then if someone doesn't leave, it's, you know, trying to get somebody out, good luck. It's, you know, a year, year and a half to, to go through the whole court system. Here, it's like, if, if there's any problem, yeah. it's very landlord friendly. If there's a problem, you're like, okay, you're out. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But so from a standpoint of, um, if the city's, if there's so much opportunity as far as like for development, because there's land and things like that, and you buy property, you definitely don't have an inventory problem, but is that also going to suppress any sort of price appreciation because you have you're going to be there's always going to be new properties new properties coming on and if you don't have if your population growth isn't at least at a certain level then your prices are literally going to stay kind of stagnant am i wrong you would think so but roberto but look at phoenix you know you 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 stand there in phoenix and you say well this desert goes forever and they've got an unlimited supply of land. And you've seen the prices go bananas in Phoenix. Same thing in Austin. Uh, the prices are now $2 million you know, average in the neighborhoods you'd want to be in in Austin. Why not? Why not $2 million average in the better neighborhoods of San Antonio right. in the next 10 years? Actually, so I, I, mean, I, I think it's like anything, it's proximity. You know, I, I to your point, you can always go out like you know if you look at miami or any place like that you go 30 minutes away 40 minutes away and all of a sudden things are getting really cheap and it can, they can build forever um you know when you're in this closer to the core and the center it's going to get more and more expensive less inventory more desirability of people wanting to live there and probably the further out you go like anything they're going to build more and more you know you have a large company like toll brothers and they'll do like 400 homes and things like that. It's a totally different market. You know, um, I, I can't speak to that in terms of how much, you know, all of a sudden maybe it will, it will be stagnant and, and not grow in that way. But I think as you get close to downtown, I think there's incredible opportunity for growth and, and, and prices will keep increasing. Yeah. Population in San Antonio is projected to grow about 35% in the next five to 10 years. So that, that's a lot. That's, like a million people. Are you know what the key is here. for me? It's that airport. The fact that you have uh, the seventh largest city in America, you've got another two and a half, you said billion dollars going into yeah. the airport investment. And and uh, so if you've got a fabulous airport that can get everywhere else and you're accessible to New York and Frank and equally accessible to Frankfurt, I think that that uh, you can't miss if you've got a great airport. When we did the Montana show, remember that, Roberto? We talked and we said, so Montana, big place, where are the most valuable places? And they said, you got to really be within an hour of an airport. Yeah. And those, you know, that's the valuable ranches. And we said, okay, you want, you, you need accessibility there to water 
and an airport. Got it. And so when I look at San Antonio and I say, well, you've got a river walk going right through the middle of town uh, and you've got an airport, um, you've got the recipe for success. So, no, I'm excited about this. Um, so you put this coffee shop here and I'm looking at at least 100 brand new condos across the street. Is that accidental? No, so <laughs> this, so where we, we are right now is um, my wife's had been on this corner for 10 years. She has a hair salon and it's 3,500 square feet. Um, this whole area, there was nothing. It was completely abandoned, like just a large commercial space. And she had the foresight to rent the place, take this. And then when we got married, I'm like, this is a now because of everything that's built around, let's do a coffee shop. We're going to do a private members club here at night. As you can see, it's a little more elevated than a, your typical coffee shop. Did you buy the building? No, we didn't buy the building. Okay. No. But, uh, Not yet. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, I started getting, step. And, and we're like heavily invested. And in, we just opened this week a, um, a salon and spa at Saks Fifth Avenue um, in, in the, the mall here. So it's a 3,500 square foot uh, spa and, uh, and hair salon at Cold Main and Company. I got to tell you, last night, Roberto, I was at the event, the big uh, fiesta, and it was a, a bit of a debutante ball. And uh, the lady next to me, and, and it struck me what an entrepreneurial culture we have here. I talked about big businesses moving in, but San Antonio was built on the backs of entrepreneurs because the lady next to me, she pointed to these ladies up on the stage and she said, yeah, her grandfather started Southwest Airlines and her grandfather is fourth generation oil business. And that one started a bank and Geico insurance over there. And I thought, oh my God, everybody around here, if they're not opening up a coffee shop or a Saks Fifth Avenue, they're, they're opening up an airline. I mean, what an <laughs> incredible, yeah, what an incredibly uh, energizing and vibrant place to that, grow up. That, that's exactly to my point of where you don't even realize. Like, and that person who has one of those companies will live in a million dollar home. They're not, they're not in a, you know, $20 million home that they're like wanting their wealth. You know, I think that's, a, you know, going back to your point about what's the difference. I think Dallas, you would see that. <laughs> Big know? hat, no cattle. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> but will it, will, won't every city, I mean, this world is becoming more and more difficult to find really special places that are not, you know, they're not, around, they're not overpopulated, that are, that are special, just like what you're talking about. Don't you think that eventually, 10 years, 15 years from now, it's going to get a little, not ruined, but it's going to change. It's going to be a lot of money there. People starting to throw around money right, left and center, building big houses, doing that kind of thing. Don't you think? That's more of a yeah, philosophical yeah. question than anything. I, I, I know, I, I know. I mean, it's a, it's a. Listen, it, we all kind of want both. We want things to keep growing and have larger and more expensive houses, and at the same time, you don't. So it's, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to find that balance always. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of the locals do not want it. Um, you know, they're they're happy with it being a secret, but you know, when you're this close to Austin, which have already boomed, it's kind of hard. You know, Roberto, we just did a show in St. Bart's and St. Bart's is going to continue to be expensive because of scarcity. They're not allowing any more building to happen. We just did a, a show in Palm Beach and uh, West Palm Beach. Very opposite was true. They talked about uh, a, another 200,000 people of growth in the West Palm Beach market. And they talked about the dozen industries that they had targeted. And so... West Palm Beach is a growth story and they're saying that, and we are better equipped to manage that growth. And they talked about their airport and their infrastructure and managing growth. Whereas we then you flip back to our Aspen show. They're not talking about expanding the, the airport in Aspen <laughs> or, or, or Nantucket or, or your, uh, your, your St. Bart's show. So, there's two different tracks going on here. You've got some of these places that say we are not allowing additional growth and we're going to watch prices rise to unaffordable levels and we don't care. You know, that's just the way it's going to be. The Hamptons. And then you've got a couple of these markets which are embracing the growth and I think and affordability and I think San Antonio is the poster child for that kind of uh 
you know, and, and just like I got excited about the West Palm Beach and I was like, come on, you guys have grown so much already. You know, is the bloom off the rose? They said, absolutely not. We've just gotten started here and uh, yeah. showed me great big fields. And I said, are you going to plow over the sugarcane fields and build condos and high rises? And they said, no, no, no. Those fields are, you know, out there in the country. We've got plenty of room for condo development. What I hear you saying is there's still plenty of room within yeah. 15 minute drive to the airport. Yeah. And we're going to manage our growth around that effectively. Um, yeah, it's fascinating to me, the pro growth, pro landlord attitude that Texas has. I will say I met a guy who appraises ranches last night and he said he's talking to a family uh, about selling their 10,000 acre ranch on the Colorado River. And I was like, is that a 50 to $100 million ranch? And he said, yeah. And I said, why? And they said, some of these people are afraid that the tax laws are going to change and you know, it might be the last opportunity they get. So I guess that's part of what's driving some of the turnover is some of these people are trying to diversify you know, while they still can, while the tax laws are favorable and um, not not a huge amount of tax. Do you anticipate that Texas, the favorability is going to change or do I have a 10 year opportunity to be investing in Texas? Well, I mean, it, like we talked about, every city is very different. But in San Antonio, uh, I still think we're five to 10 years away from getting to that kind of point where it starts feeling you know, where things are really changing. And you you mentioned like a perfect example of, of that change was the Hamptons. You know, I, I've been going, I've had the commercial building out there for almost 30 years. And it was an old potato barn that we I bought with my partner. And originally it was a nightclub out there and it was nothing there but fields around. And now it's, you know, completely developed and, and you can't even go from Southampton to East Hampton, which normally would take 20 minutes. Now it takes two hours on, a, you know, on a big weekend. So, you know, that's where growth, too much growth is not good. You know, um, it's like, there are all these beautiful houses, great places, but you know, it just, it, it, it becomes too much, you know, where it's just like, you know, where I don't, I think it's a little more spread out here. So it's a, a lot different. It's a city as opposed to it's just a one highway place. But, um, but I, I do think there's time. I don't think it's going to happen like overnight. It's going to be organic. I think it will take five to 10 years, um, but it will happen. You hear that, Roberto? You can get to San Antonio faster than you can get to Southampton. Yeah. I know. I know. Just saying. I know. I know. You're just saying. I just say. Right. Can we talk talking about the taxes? Are there what are the taxes like on a purchase or a sale? Um, like what sort of transactional costs are there if you're if you're selling a, a one million dollar home of some sort? Um, are there any mansion taxes? Are there any? No, that's what I was going to say. It's not no like uh, New taxes. York where you have all those, you know, you have the transfer tax and the mansion tax and all. It, there's No, there's not that. It's just your basic. And, you know, I think property tax is a little higher than most places here, but you don't have income tax. So, and that's, you know, if you're living in New York, you know what that, so that's on a, like. So on that million dollar house, what can I, in the, in the, in the hill country or even downtown, what kind of, what kind of property taxes am I looking at uh, per year? uh say like if you if you're buying a house for let's say about a million dollars you're probably talking about eighteen thousand okay a year that's comparable to connecticut and uh you know we've got um but we've got the, but we've got income tax yeah. so if that's your yeah. only tax that's exactly. not so bad are you attracting where are you attracting people from california or new york or both 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 yeah or mexico and Mexico, yeah. A lot of people from, from where I'm from, that. a lot of people investing in San Antonio, yeah. Why? Tell, talk to me about the Mexico migration. Well, it's very close to home, very close to Mexico, and it's very affordable. So people see it as a second home, you know, and, and an opportunity to be in the U.S. market in Texas. They like how things work in Texas, and, and it's just affordable. So, so they, they buy a lot of homes in, in San Antonio. What's the climate like there? Is it drier than, for example, Houston that I hear is so humid? It's definitely drier than Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, that's the number one thing everyone brings up because, I mean, this last summer, I think it was, I don't even know how many months, it was 100, 100 degree. And, it, and, it, and there's incredible 
the morning is 70 degrees and end of the day, it's 100 degrees. It's a 30 degree difference um, during the day. It's, it's incredible in that way. But the one thing, you know, that I always bring up because everyone's like, how do you deal with the heat? I'm like, well, how do you deal with the cold? I mean, you know, during the hottest months, you you jump in your car, you do what you got to do. And then it's nice at night in the morning. You know, so it's it's you just plan your day around those times. Um, and but, you know, during the October, it's it's gorgeous. December, gorgeous. You know, like so it's just because live your life differently. And I prefer, to be honest, to jump in a car with AC than to bunch them up in the cold. <laughs> I, maybe because I did it my whole life, but. How cold does it get? December, January, February? Like, what's the coldest it'll get there? Well, it was in the teens. Um, but that was, it happens once a winter for three days, but but typically 40s. It's not bad. So what do you do for fun? I mean, I already said, oh, everybody must go down to the river walk. And you're like, nah, that's for tourists. But I'm going to tell you, that, you know, I'm in Connecticut where I can go two miles, I can go two hours north and I can go skiing for the day. And I can go uh, 20 minutes south down to the waterfront in Norwalk and jump on a boat and go fishing. I can be in Manhattan to go see the theater. So a lot of people want to be, you know, in retirement or when you're a young professional, you want to be able to go out and have fun and, and hit the restaurant scene. Is it a great restaurant scene? And what are the things to do besides going to a San Antonio Spurs game? Uh, well, restaurant scene is amazing. Actually, the Culinary Institute is here. Ooh, so okay. you have a lot of amazing chefs, um, a lot of great food here. Um, you know, it, a lot of, you know, outdoor activity. Uh, that is one of those things that I never was. What does that really... mean? Like rodeo? Do we all go rodeo here? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, that's a second question. <laughs> okay. Eight, in other words, do I have my cowboy boots yet? So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's so what do we do like? around here uh, for me, it was golf. Okay. You know, I've wanted to golf my whole life and it's almost impossible thing to do in New York. Um, so it's, it's an amazing, you know, it, there's tons of the, you have rivers all around, uh, again, the hill country, um, which you can go to wineries, there's caves. I, I don't know where else, David, maybe you, some places that you go. It just depends what you like, you know. There's tons of parks also, uh, restaurants. There's hundreds of new restaurants coming up, uh, very elevated, like Gordon was saying, new concepts. I mean, there's something for everybody here. But you have to be restricted on some of the outdoor activity, like during the summertime, right? Because it's hot. It's yeah. hot. But you could go to the water areas where there's rivers or, or stuff like that. You can get refreshed there. I mean, personally, it doesn't bother me that it's really hot. I, I kind of like it, actually. But so, for example, like ch children who have children's sports are playing soccer in the afternoon and playing baseball in the afternoon and things like that. Can they do that? Yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean, well, you know, Texas is known for their football and mm -hmm. they're playing in 90 degree heat. I mean, uh, I just was with somebody yesterday. And he was talking about that, how he, they would like. But, you know, they, they try to do it earlier and later, as I was saying, because there's a huge, huge difference in, in temperature. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be up early in the morning, play for two hours then, and then two hours at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So you, you just kind of have to plan around that a little more. Can I talk? I'm going to tell you, uh, the bias of a lot of people watching this show is they think of Texas. They think of that movie Giant, where the Yankee comes in from the east, from Virginia, where everything's green. And they get to Texas and they look around as far as they can see and there's nothing there. And I got to tell you that that's the other side of Texas, right? We're in the part of Texas where there's actually green grass right across the street. There's a couple acres of green grass right across the street. And, um, and you just mentioned hill country with rivers and forests, yep. not the Texas of giant that scares Frankly, it scares a lot of people. Oh my God, I'm going to get there and it's just going to be an empty desert. It's not. It's not a desert at all. No, no. But also Texas is, I mean, I, I think it's a, what's the second largest state. I mean, it's it's huge. It's yeah, massive. It's so, um, you know, just the amount of time it takes to go across the state, you know, so there's all different types of areas. So yeah, it's like a lot of people go to a place called Marfa, which is about five hours. And it's really beautiful you know mountainous and and it's you know it's about a five hour drive and that's the thing i think people from here you know that took a little bit of use to it. it's like oh yeah we're just gonna go to marfa and to me that's like you know an hour and a half away it's five hours <laughs> but once you get there it's spectacular 
I mean, it's, wasn't that made famous just because they had, they didn't, they, the photographer did that one photo of the, like the Prada store or something like right. in the yeah. middle of nothing, nowhere. Yeah. There's I some, tell uh, you though, if I want like really good skiing, I got to drive four or five hours up to Vermont to do it. So I get it. You know, I mean, you know, right here it's 10 minutes to go to San Antonio airport. You fly into Denver, right. Which is, you know, right there and you're up in the mountains. Yeah, see, it's a totally different mind, yeah, mindset. Different mindset. It's hard to get to the New York airports, e even in New York, to, if you want to get, go somewhere. <laughs> and the fact that the airport's 15 minutes for you yeah. is pretty incredible. And yeah. then you get anywhere from it. Yeah. What do you think, Roberto? Are you convinced? <laughs> it, it's interesting. I mean, the affordability thing, coming from a place like New York, I'm just thinking, uh, you know, of Gordon, who's like, was it a New Yorker? And to go there and just be like, man, this is cheap. Like that, that would be nice. <laughs> My wife is telling me all the time, why don't we cash in our chips and head south? And why are we working so hard? Why are we on the rat race? Why don't we just cash in and go to a less expensive part of the country? And for her, it's where she grew up, Charlotte, which is not so cheap anymore. And Florida, not so cheap anymore. So I think for a huge number of our listeners, they're going to look at this $300,000 average home price and they're going to say, wow, I could just sell my home, move down there and truly retire. Yeah. And there's something to do and there's great restaurants and there's interesting people. And I could even uh, open up a coffee shop or a small business and you know find something to do i wouldn't be just playing golf and i think that's a huge appeal and i, I believe you when you say that we're going to double or triple the size of san antonio over the next decade i believe you how, how long is the flight how long is the flight from nyc three and a half but you know as i said it's it's i i don't i don't it's, it's like my office i mean i i 15 minutes on the airport. I have my stuff in New York. I jump on a plane. I work on my phone. I take a really early morning flight. And then I'm like, I'll, I'll set up appointments at noon on, in New York and go right from the airport, uh, you know, to my office and take people out. It's very, very easy. Uh, so the so people, the, the people that are coming there are considering San Antonio. Where are the, what are the, what are their, what's your competition? Is it Austin? It's not Austin. No. No. I, would, I, I don't know. I, I would say in terms of competition. I mean, is it Nashville? Is it? Uh, yeah, what know? else are they considering at that $300,000 price? Yeah. I, not much. Not much. That's, not much, yeah. that's what I'm like. Not, I'm, not, not really. One of the few hidden gems in the U.S. right now, San Antonio. All right. So if I'm interested and I want to hear more, I can find Gordon or David you're two of the only, what, dozen or so agents. And Douglas Elliman's got an office in here in San Antonio. So if I went to Douglas Elliman.com, I type in San Antonio, I'm going to find David and I'm going to find Gordon on that page and I can get, get in touch. Yes. Is that the yeah, best way? Can, that's the best way. Okay. You can visit, you can also visit Luxury Listings Texas, Luxury Listings Texas.com. You can see the whole San Antonio Market. Luxury Listings Texas.com. Nice. Luxury Listings Texas. See them all. all right. Well, if you love real estate like I do, then like this show, tell your friends, and subscribe. And uh, where are we going to be next week, Roberto? And let's talk about Grace Farms real quick. Yes. Grace Farms, our sponsor. We thank them once again. 80 acres in New Canaan, Connecticut. You can imagine what that real estate costs, <laughs> you know, 80 acres with a beautiful river building. And you can go there and have a cup of tea with Frank in the tea house. You can buy some of their uh, teas and coffees and you can go uh, basically one of the most beautiful spots in, um, in Fairfield County, gracefarms.org. Check it out. Thank you, Roberto, for another great show. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, David. Appreciate Thank you, it. Gordon. Thank you. And where Thank are you. we next week? I don't know. Is it the Wealth Report next week? No. I think Jason we've got Haber, the Wealth American Report Real coming up. And what else? Jason Haber, American oh, Real yeah. Estate. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Everybody's talking about NAR these days. And everybody's wondering, what about NAR? 
the Amer- th- this is a new association that may compete with NAR, may replace NAR. And that's why we want to talk to Jason Haber next week about the future of NAR and the American, what is it, American what? Real Estate Association. The American Real Estate Association. So we're going to find that out about that next week. But again, thank you, gentlemen. This is a great show. Yeah, thank you. Thank, you, sir. thank you, guys. Get, get some right. cowboy boots, John. Come back. <laughs> and a big hat, right? <laughs> a big hat. Big hat. See you guys.